What's up everybody? I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can make a silicone mold out of just about anything. Now normally to do that you would need something like this, which would work really great, but it's $30. Well I'm going to show you how we can accomplish the exact same thing at just a fraction of the cost. And to do that all we're going to need is just two simple supplies. Type 1 silicone and acetone nail polish remover. Other than just a few extras to mix this with, that's really all we're going to need. So the first thing we're going to need is the object that we're actually going to make a mold of. For my project, I'm going to use a mason jar. You see a lot of mason jar candles, well I'm going to make a candle that's actually a mason jar. You can of course mold anything else that you like, but this is a candle making channel so I make candles. So we've got our object that we're going to mold, now we need a container that's going to hold our mold. For that I'm just using the bottom half of a milk garden. These work really well because they're wax lined, they're already contained, it's something most of us have anyway. And for this project, it fits perfectly. So we're going to put our mason jar in, make sure it gets nice and centered. A couple things we want to make sure of. Uh, first thing is we want to make sure that it's actually going to fit in there. We don't want there to be a lot of extra space left because that's just going to be more material that we have to pour in to make our mold. And we don't want there to only be a tiny bit of space left because that would mean our finished mold will be real thin, walled, and flimsy. So at a minimum, we want about a half an inch of space around the entire mold. It's going to look something like this. Now the last thing we want to do is mark a spot for our seam line. We are going to have to cut one side of this mold to release the object that we mold. And in doing that there is a slight chance that you could have a seam. So we want to make sure we put that seam in a place where it's not going to be noticeable. So to do that we're just going to pick a place on the object where a seam is not going to be that noticeable. And we're just going to mark that side on the container. So that's ready to go. It's ready to have mold mix poured in it. Now we just have to mix our silicone. So to start we need just some sort of disposable plastic container. A caulking gun and our silicone caulk and our acetone fingernail polish remover. Again, we're using the Type 1 silicone. Anybody that's ever worked with this has looked at that and thought, why can't I just use that by itself and make a mold? Well, technically you can, but it's too thick. It's not going to form around the mold properly. You're going to have a lot of air pockets. So really the only way we could use this by itself is if it were thinned out quite a bit. Well, that's where the acetone comes in. We're just going to add the acetone as a solvent. It'll mix with the silicone break it down, make it real nice and runny. Uh, once we pour it and it cures, the acetone will evaporate away and we'll be left with just nothing but our silicone. So really this next step is just as simple as mixing the two of these together. A mold this size is probably going to take about two of these, so that's going to be 20 ounces of silicone. For that much, we're going to start off with about eight ounces of the acetone. Get that mixed together. If it starts to thicken up a little bit, we can always add more acetone until we get that really thin watery mix that we're after. So to get started, we're going to need a caulking gun, a utility knife, and just something to stir this mixture with. One last thing, this stuff really stinks. So at a minimum you want to do this outside or in a well ventilated area. But in addition it's always a good idea to use a respirator. These are pretty easy to get a hold of. I got this one off of Amazon. I will leave links in the video description of everything that you're going to see in this video. So if you guys wanted your own you can just follow those links. So now we've got everything set. We're just going to mix everything together. All right, so that's mixed really well. The consistency we're going for is going to be about like maple syrup. Just a really thick, runny, not too watery. You can tell all that acetone is mixed in. If it weren't mixed in but you thought it was ready, you could pour a little bit of that acetone out. But this is all mixed in. It's the consistency that we want. So now we're just going to pour our mold. I'm going to recheck it, make sure it's still centered. And we're going to try to pour around the edges first. We're just going to let it gradually fill in over the top. So we've got our mold filled. Now we're just going to take some type of skewer or rod. It's going to try to work out any air bubbles that might be trapped in there. One last smooth over the top. As it settles, some more air bubbles are going to pop out. The top is going to smooth a little bit better. 
And it should be nice and clean and even when it's fully cured. So now we're just going to let it sit and cure. A mold this size is going to take about 10 to 12 hours to fully cure and dry before we can actually take that uh, mason jar out of there and actually use this as a mold. So we're just going to let this sit. When we come back, it should be ready to use. So this took about 12 hours to completely harden and cure. You'll know when it's ready because it'll be real uh, solid and rubbery to the touch. When you squeeze it from the sides, it's not going to have much give at all to it. But when in doubt, you can always just give it more cure time. But this is done. It's ready to come out of the mill carton. One last step before we do that, we need to mark on the mold where we put our mark for the seam line. That way we make sure we cut it in the right place. So we've got it marked. Now we're just going to cut the cardboard off. And here's what our finished mold is going to look like. Now we can't get our mason dry out just yet because if we try to pry it out, we would just rip the mold. So unfortunately, we're going to have to cut a seam down the side. So that way we can kind of open it up and pop our object out. So to do that, we're just going to go back to where we marked our seam line. And we're just going to draw our seam line up the side. Now we don't want to draw a straight line because when that seam goes back together, it's just going to be two straight edges. And they do have the potential to be able to slide up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to cut a jagged line. That way it's going to fit together a lot better and it's going to have a lot less chance of sliding. So the seam line we cut is going to look something like that. So we're just going to take an X-Acto knife or a utility knife. And very slowly and carefully we're just going to cut out that seam. So we've got our seam line cut. One thing you don't want to do is cut all the way to the bottom. You want to stop that cut about an inch from the bottom just to help eliminate the potential of having any leaks. So now we're just going to slowly and carefully, without tearing our mold, just pry it apart from the mason jar and pop that out of there. There we go, now we've got our object completely unmolded, and here's what our finished mold is going to look like. You can see where we cut our seam line up the side. Now we're ready to get this prepped and use it as a mold. To get our mold ready, we basically just have to seal it up a little bit so that that seam's not going to come apart on us. You can use rubber bands. I don't like to just because it can misshape in the mold. I found the easiest thing to use is just tape. We can line it up just right, get it as tight as we want. Tape it closed and it's not coming apart. We can add a little bit of tape up the seam just to ensure that it's not going to leak any. And that's going to hold perfectly and function just like it should. Now we can go ahead and pour our medium. Uh, for the candle makers, you're going to want to add a, uh, a wick pin for your wick. Just take a metal rod or a wooden rod. We're just going to poke that up through the bottom. Get it centered and secured in place with a clothespin. Now we're ready to pour. At this point you can pour your resin, your wax, whatever medium you choose to uh, make your object out of. But like I said, this is a candle making channel, so we're going to make some candles. For my candle makers that are wondering, this is uh, Kentucky 143 Paraffin Pillar Wax from Rustic Essentials. I'll leave links in the video description. Now we're just going to pour a medium just like we would for any other project. Now we're just going to let that sit and cure. Once it's hard and ready to come out, we'll be able to pop it out of the mold, put our wick through it, and we'll have a perfect mason jar candle. So now the object that we poured is completely dried. We just got to pop it out of the mold. And now we're just going to finish turning this into a candle. And now all we've got to do is sit back and enjoy our work. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more candle making and mold making tips and tricks, make sure to check out all my playlists. Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.